Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It's the mayhem, bum, bum, bum. There's the video, dun, dun, dun. don't know why now. Hey, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sork, here in the dark, faded to black, no video whatsoever for some reason. There it is. And with me is my compatriot on Monday night. Coping session is Mad Mike in the 40s. Welcome to Monday Night Heat. That's what it is. That's what it is. To me, it was Monday Night Fibbage. Because we played Jackbox, because I did not expect as much wrestling action. Although, if I tried to sit down for the wrestling action, there was a lot of wrestling action that was a raw, was very raw. It's like they finally, they finally just did a Monday Night Raw. No, so, without Sorg, the fans. So they they sent home everyone that was critical for WrestleMania. Oh well, that's what it was. Okay. They, they, they sent home everyone except for Seth Rollins. Okay. That was, that was critical for Seth WrestleMania. Moped. And, and Seth... everyone who was there lives in Florida. Yes. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome to the WWE local edition. Um, yeah. No, absolutely. Hey, but we, that's that's obviously what's going on here, if you, if you have any knowledge of that stuff. Uh, and, and, and Seth Rollins even just kind of moped to the ring, did his thing, and moped to the back. It's like me getting up in the morning these days. Well, it's uh, on, it's, it's like uh, the Monday Night Messiah. On Monday, he rested. Mm, gotcha, gotcha. It's very By the way, I did use a summoning charm, apparently, on Denzel de Jornet. <laughs> what? I, I said his name on the Mayhem show last week, and <laughs> Did you? lo and behold, he appears. I'm like, who are, who are these randos? What is going on right now? So Ron I was like, It's only a matter of time before I hear the name Denzel DeJournette on Raw. I, only a matter of time. Mike, I really want to keep most of the WrestleMania chat to tomorrow, because I think it's just what needs to happen in general fair um but can i say allowed can to, i say one quick you're, thing you're allowed to say one thing that is your good in wrestling this week as it pertains to wrestlemania hmm. wow i get i i have to narrow it down to one um da, 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 da. Da. That's the funeral march of John Cena. Oh, I see. I get this yeah. now. I get this. Okay. 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 It's the funeral. It's the funeral march of John Cena. Um, I, well, I, I, I will say, the Firefly Funhouse was everything I could have expected and fucking more. It was amazing. Jeez, jeez. I, like, like. If if y'all saw me on the live stream during the Boneyard match and you saw how excited I was during that, <laughs> shit didn't even come close to not, how I was feeling during the I Firefly I just imagined you just screaming your head off wherever you were during this match. I I was downstairs. I was eating the leftover wings I had from the night before. <laughs> Actually, I think at that point I was on to ice cream. Mm. So, yeah. But J- Jesus, mm-hmm. Jesus. Uh, so related, uh, my good for the week actually is the reaction of Eric Bischoff. Oh, no. To... Fuck Eric Bischoff. <laughs> Fuck Eric Bischoff. I love I love that. I, I love no, the like, no. what did I just watch? And I was fired Eric... in October, but somehow was involved in in. No, Reed Richards couldn't have reached as far as Eric Bischoff did in that fucking video. Come on. No, no, no. They enjoyed it, no. but anyways, no. The reaction video is a big. New York was not even Eric Bischoff's idea. He stole it from Japan, <laughs> just like Tarantino. Right. I did watch Hateful Eight over the weekend. Finally. Good. Yeah. It's a great movie. Is it worthwhile to jump into the extended edition? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. It's okay. fun. Okay. It's fun. I need. I need Good to, time. I need to give it some time to breathe before I, I do that. I noticed the extended edition is in four episodes. 
<laughs> instead yes. of a movie. Uh, I, I, I have it on one disc. Oh, good. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. But that's just how, how Netflix did it, I guess. So, all right. Um, I guess it is an episodic nature, as Tarantino films typically are. But anyways, this is not the Tarantino may- mayhem, but we may have to figure something out to do in the meantime here for a few weeks at least. Um, so, uh, so Raw, I, I say uh, uh, my, my Raw experience, like I said, was we did a live stream and we just played Quiplash and Fibbage mm-hmm. while we, we all watched Raw in the background. Um, for, for the first hour of Raw, I played Harry Potter trivia. Yeah, we're just like, you know what? This is a secondary thing, and that's kind of okay, isn't it? It's Monday Night Heat. Monday because Night I, Night I knew Heat. I knew nothing was going to happen on this show. And they tried. They, sca- they scared me. They, they scared, the crap <laughs> they out they they scared your, me. They made you poop your pants a little bit. Um, with the big show came out and challenged Drew in the most awkward of uh, ways. Yep. Also, 20 minutes after Brock Lesnar, apparently for some reason, Drew was played to the ring to be interviewed. Uh, well, no, that makes sense. I can see that. They they did a lot of post-match interviews with pretty much all the winners. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. But, you know, being played out to the ring in front of nobody, it, that was a little awkward. But anyways, I guess, sure. Just keep pretending that things are normal. Um, So, I, I just... It, it was odd, but it was it was something, and it, and it, and 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 I say it was significant because it made you worry. Yeah, it made me worry, but not for good reasons. Did you? But you really believe that this could happen? Um, only because I worried about Drew's health. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, if this was non-coronavirus time, yeah. I wouldn't have been worried at all. Right. This is, this is the, nothing is going to make wrestling sense because everything is a reaction to the reality of what's happening around. Yeah, me. because yeah. like if something was wrong with Drew and he had to be quarantined or whatever, like they weren't going to replace Roman and Drew for WrestleMania. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, <laughs> yeah. And Brock still has to get back to Canada. Uh, so which I'm sure is going to be awkward enough. Uh, they and I feel like we're going to be talking about these a lot. Like I, I did watch the Chronicle on Drew, and mm-hmm. uh, Me it, too. and it was it was interesting because they do like I think that's the first, and we're probably going to have several at this point coming up. Um, like kind of a reactionary to everything that's been happening. Like he was on his way to Scotland when they they pulled him out of England on a press junket, basically, um, to just to make sure he could get the freak home. Uh, before they shut down the borders, so like and this is you know mid to late March, uh, well mid but basically mid March. So it, that that was kind of an interesting uh, watch uh, for that. But uh, it's but it, it's it's a good illustration of everything going on there. So I I don't know. It, it was um I feel like we got raw over the way. Naya came back. Good to see. Good mm-hmm. to see. Yeah, uh, pretty much everyone who had to be written off the show. Mm-hmm. I think for whatever reason, mm-hmm. uh, was able to come back. Like we got Ricochet back, we got Cedric Alexander back, we got Nia Jax back, we got Humberto back. Like we got Apollo Cruz, who was on SmackDown but is now on Raw for some reason back. Well, they get they really talked about it being like that he's there for, there to stay from the sounds of it. Yeah, they, but they at least presented it that way. Mm-hmm. And but. Big news, we get Bianca Belair on Raw. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And by the way, Sorg, I don't know if you follow any of the Street Profits or Bianca on Twitter. Um, but uh, every year for WrestleMania, there, there's what there's what the the people in the biz call the post-mania party. Mm-hmm. It's always a huge deal. You know, everyone, you know, celebrates. They give themselves a big pat on the back and everything. Yeah. Um, Bianca Belair and Montez Ford... They dressed up in fancy duds and threw themselves a post mania party and they posted pictures and video. And it's amazing and adorable. They threw themselves in a post mania party in their house. I'm trying to find this right now. I'm it's, really it's trying really to find great. this right now. Let's see. I found her account. I, I don't follow it. That's changing. I don't know what account I'm following from. Hope it. This is where I found out. I just followed it from a fine account or something. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, oh, no, no, that's matches. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. No, I, I, I'm going to have to look for these. Well, there, there they are dressed up. Yeah. Yeah, they threw themselves a post-mania party. Just the two of them. That's great. It's, that's it's great. great. They're fantastic. I, I, I'm so glad that, that that's that's happening. And just just um, Montez is just reactions to her. Mm-hmm. And um, his his affection to the to the cameraman. Yes. <laughs> like I'm just like this all every every week. I'm good if this just happens every week. It happened three times. It happened for 45 minutes tonight. You know. Yeah, you know, it, that was a little much. So so the it was three, a little the, much. The, the three matches of profits um, was was the thing. And then I, I transitioned around a little bit before 10:30. I transitioned from being in the studio space here uh, to just you know throwing the throwing it on the TV. And my my Hulu Live um, knocked me back, and the Street Profits were starting to come out again at 10:30 for me. And I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is happening? Didn't we get Didn't we get enough of these guys? I love these guys, but it's a little too much. And then I'm like, oh, jump the live. Okay. And then I got mm-hmm. I don't yeah. know. Uh, Deanna Praza or something. I, I don't. I, yeah, I Deanna remember. versus Nia Jax. Uh, whatever was happening at like like ten twenty five uh, tonight. So that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and I I just went to Hulu instead of my Facebook Live to see what's going on in the chat because that's how confused I am right now. Yeah. But no, I you know given everything that's happening, I I I would have loved to see some of these debuts and re debuts, and I'm sure there's things that would have happened that we just obviously can't right now. Um, so, but for a money, you know, for a, a unattended raw after, after, uh, mania, uh, it was just fine. You know, and, and we got wrestling, we didn't get half a show of wrestling, uh, rematch, you know, highlights from three years ago or anything like that. Yeah, or, or, I, I wouldn't mind. You, you think it would have been better if they would have done that? Uh, for very personal reasons. For, oh, <laughs> yes, obviously. Um, yes. but, uh, but that's where I, 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 I have a feeling we're going to be getting a lot of rewinds though you think we're going to get a lot of i i think it's it's going to be like like fs1 tomorrow i i i don't know what raw is going to be next week uh, yeah i legit don't know they have not promoted anything mm-hmm. they, they didn't they didn't tease anything for next week they didn't do tease you, any matches do you still do a show that you call monday night raw that is really just going to be replaying chronicle um or 24 or something like that or mm-hmm. do you, you just say this is going to be this like, um, hey, I, I, you have to do something because USA needs to air something. Yeah, they do. You can't. You can't just air episodes of SVU. Yeah, yeah. I get. I, it's probably going to be like, like you said, like the Chronicles or the Twenty Fours or something. Like it wouldn't shock me in the least to see that kind of stuff broken up mm-hmm. into a three-hour block on Mondays. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's it, it's easy. <laughs> you know like honestly what they should to... go ahead what they should do in my opinion air an episode of nxt uk yeah air, air an yeah. episode of 205 live on fridays like like get some other get some or or if you're not going to air whole episodes throw in matches from those shows mm-hmm. matches people haven't seen probably like because they're on network exclusive shows like yeah, yeah that's what you should do like do a best of nxt uk one night do a best of 205 live one night yeah that's what they should be focusing on yeah because people are going to tune in on monday to see what's happening yeah and and if you drop uh, that in and you introduce them you introduce all those people on monday and mm-hmm. granted granted a lot of these faces have shown up on wednesday but to some people, there are a, there is a fantastic number of people. I'm sure that only watch wrestling on Mondays. Period. Yep. Right. Or Friday. Or Fridays. Period. And you introduce all those people to who's this guy? Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Who's uh-huh. this guy? Who's like this honestly, Five Live. Raw. Raw should show every Walter match. Mm, best of Walter. They should. They should show every single Walter match. Walter. Show now me. you know his name. Yes. Mm-hmm. Walter, and you realize why it's all caps. Yes, Walter. That's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but honestly, that's what they should do. I don't think that's what they're going to do. No, and even but that's, bigger, what they, that's what they should do. But even bigger, um, if they were to do that on Friday at SmackDown, and SmackDown is arguably an even bigger potential audience. Yeah, but I, I think you want to kind of keep it relegated because Finn Balor is going to be going against Walter at some point. Mm-hmm. 
Finn Balor is more known to the Raw crowd than he is the SmackDown crowd. Absolutely. So you can have you can even have Finn Balor talking about Walter mm-hmm. and introducing a match about Walter. Like, I don't see the problem in that. Or we'll I don't just, see a problem. I don't see a problem in that at all. Or we'll just get a three-hour block of total Bellas. Oh boy. Um. No. No. Thank you. Or a special showing of the Big Show show. Are you going to watch the Big Show show? I think I'm going to have to. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I it it looks like fullest house. Yeah, oh, big time, big time. Because he's larger, mm-hmm. so it's Fuller. bigger than Fuller House. Ah, it's the fullest house. Like I would, I would have said bigger house, but that doesn't make any sense. I so the and this is because I have a very cringiness. Like I'm like, oh, full house. It's like I remember. And then I'm just like, ooh. I it's like I, I like sitcoms are very cringy to me right now, in, in in certain veins. Like I can't go back to Boy Meets World. You know what I mean? It's one of those like like uh, Boy it, Meets World. I can go back to like still. It, but anything that tries to be like Girl Meets World couldn't do it. Oh like, no, I I tried no girl. Boy Meets World, I was able to go out, go back to because I remember the episode. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, again, I'm they, the person that they were made for me then, so yeah. I appreciate them with nostalgia. Now you can't, I, you can't watch I, stuff like that. Like now. I can't. I mean, the same cringe is the reason why I am one of the geeks that do not does not like uh, Big Bang Theory. Um. Okay, I don't mind Big Bang Theory. Yeah, I, I just don't. don't. Big Bang Theory doesn't focus on liter- literal children. That's true too. That's true too. Big Bang Theory doesn't focus on literal children. Like, <laughs> like Girl Meets World, I just feel weird watching because I'm like, I can't relate to 13 year olds at all these days. And this was when I was working in a damn toy store. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, like I started sale. watching Girl Meets World because I was very curious about it, and I like the actors, and I, I like, I enjoyed the concept. I thought the concept was interesting, but I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, you're, we're more of the uh, friends from college generation now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Now, if they focused on, if they did Girl Meets World, but the girls were in like 10th grade, where it's a little bit closer, like they're getting jobs, they're looking at college and stuff like that, can't directly relate to them, but it's closer. You know what I mean? But like they went back to the age when you just Corey want, you, you just want to see when Corey to what Corey and Tobago are up to. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, yeah. And and that's what drew people in, and then the show wasn't about them at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like there were epi- there were B and C side stories about Corey and Tobago, but you never really got what their lives were like. Nope. Oh, what else is going on, Mike? Um, Apollo Crews wrestled a long time on Raw. Yeah, he did. I mean, I, I think he wrestled. Him. I think he wrestled longer tonight on Raw than he did in all of 2019. <laughs> uh, a, a, a Raw or SmackDown, let's say, right? No, no, not not SmackDown. He had a good run on SmackDown. Okay, okay, but yeah, I would. Yeah. Well, uh, I got nothing else for tonight. <laughs> it was. Um. Yeah, I mean. Kevin Owens, um, kind of interesting promo. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe he's going back to being a heel now. Now that we have a face champion. Okay. Like honestly, when they said that something happened after WrestleMania, it was I, your, your Kevin I Owens was, theory that you had. Right? I was expecting Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. I was expecting Kevin Owens to power Brown Drew off the stage. Mm-hmm. That's what I was expecting. And I'm like, oh, if we're doing this, that could great i mean it doesn't seem like we're going there and bold choice of wwe to promote money in the bank last night yeah that was a that's a bold choice i don't think that's happening it seems more aspirational so yeah i i don't think that's happening i mean i'm even even happy to see some of the indie shows that were like kind of boldly saying we're gonna still run in like april or may saying ah yeah pump the brakes yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, who knows this is going to return? But we got plenty of things to watch in the meantime. We may have homework assignments. I think. Um, Sorg, Sorg, 
I one of these days we should just do a live watch of Boone the Bounty Hunter. That's a thing we can do as well. It's been a little bit. I think it's mm-hmm. time. Yeah. It's it's we're do we're due for some Boone. Mm-hmm. Dune we're due for some Boone. We're Dune. We're Dune. Dune. Dune for some Boone. Dune for some Boone. Got it. Mm-hmm. But no, like honestly, if there's no Raw next week, or not, or at least not Raw in the current form that it's been in, what would you like us to do? What would you like us to talk about? Like, Sorg, we could watch The Wrestler and get real sad about <sighs> yes. We yes. Can, we can watch that and get real sad about oh, wrestling. And for like, like multiple reasons, because Larry Sweeney's in that. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I I think Beyond the Mat might still be on Netflix. I have the DVD. I do not. <laughs> like, we can just. I have. We, there's a lot of rest. We can even watch like old shit on the network. Like we can do a weekly poll. Like which pay per view do you want us to watch? Which Marine and, do you want us to watch? Sorg, I still say we need to do a live watch along of WCW's last pay per view. Mm-hmm. I believe it was greed. Yes, which is fitting. <laughs> but like, we should do a live watch along of that. We should do a live watch along of the last Nitro mm-hmm. and the Raw that followed it. Plenty to do. Plenty. Yeah, to like do. there are ideas here, and we could all like ha- we could have one week where we each pick our favorite pay per view. I love I love the cover art that I'm getting for Beyond the Mat is just like like the rock side eyeing somebody oh. off of a uh, off a frame. I don't know if mm-hmm. you can see that there, Mike. Yep. So I'm just like you're like the rock's just like not impressed with whatever's going on, and that's how we're gonna represent Beyond the Mat right now. <laughs> I mean, and the best thing is the rock is not even really in that. Movie. No, he isn't. He's he's like featured. Wait, don't is is that the one where they do a bit about um uh fully when he's taking all the headshots in front of his kids? Yes. Yeah. 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 Noel Noel Foley is in that more than the Rock is. Yes. So if you follow her Instagram uh, account and have been think dirty thoughts about her, that's going to be a very odd watch for you. Mm, maybe. Nope. <laughs> okay. Dep- uh, it depends on what your thoughts are to begin with. Anyways, let's not go yeah. down that road. Uh, no, let's not. <laughs> uh, we have uh, so I'm interviewing Magnum CK. I got here. Here's something we can watch and review. Okay. Magnum's Opus, his documentary is going to launch uh, Thursday uh, on YouTube and Amazon. Oh, that's cool. So that is something to watch. We'll talk to him Wednesday about that the day before it does release uh, to get a little preview about uh, what's going on there. And I do intend. I, I actually intend to block out like two hours to go watch it on thursday before we get into the uh listen to your parents podcast and everything also i need to check the tech but i believe we are going to do uh rocket league on friday uh on the live streams at indie and rocket i'm working league? what's that rocket league rocket league sorg is that, is that cross platform i forget i believe it is and that's what i'm checking unfortunately i had to yeah. log into it on my xbox and it did not bring over my uh, Macho Man and Ultimate Warrior stuff from my PC. Okay, because I only have it on Xbox. Yes, yeah, I also have, okay. I don't have a Sony. Oh, that's fine. I have the we're Xbox here, so I just want to make sure our Sony friends can join us as well. Because uh, I know Jordan between Jordan and uh, a few others, uh, and it's over on Game Pass. If you guys are on the Xbox and don't have that yet. So. And it's also it's only twenty bucks. Just buy Rocket League. It's, Rocket only, League. it's only twenty bucks, but if you have Game Pass, Game Pass for your first month is a dollar. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, it's that's great. Not bad at all. It yeah. is great. Just loaded up Halo Five for the first time the other day. So good. Played nice. some super guacamole with my wife. Excellent. She did not I, care for it. I was playing Lego Star Wars today. Like, yes, yes. The first one. Yes. I have all three of them on my gold. It's 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 amazing. Um, just just a lot of uh, but 2K20 was free this weekend. Don't, that still don't. seems like you overpaid. Still feel like I feel like I overpaid. I never got so angry at a video game. Um, like just just well, never got so angry. Um, it just just from a trusted brand like WWE. Okay, is Dude. are they really a trusted brand? <laughs> Let's. Let's be 
honest. <laughs> Are they a trusted <laughs> video game brand? Not a video point? game brand, but generally, and I had not jumped into it for years. Okay, okay, but a trusted brand is different from a trusted video game brand. Like, like, like IHOP is a trusted brand. What? <laughs> would, would I trust them to make a video game? No, nope, or I would not. That could be Burger King made video games for the Xbox. Remember that? No, you don't know about this. Well, I, but I don't. I also don't trust Burger King as a brand. <laughs> as a as a brand in my belly, they they are trying. They are trying to t- tell me that plants taste like meat, and I'm like, no, they do not. What? Well, that that's a lot. That's a that's not just them. It's like every restaurant. But, I but they're really pushing it. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're giving people blind taste tests. I'm like. Give me a blind taste test. I'll tell you exactly which one is the hamburger. I'll be like, hey, you know what? Doesn't taste too different. Um, but it gives you the poops. You're not selling it. That's my official review. You're you're not selling it to if me. If you're just like, I don't want to eat meat, let's do this. I'll be like, okay, get the toilet paper ready. And that is a bad sign right right now because we know how that's going with toilet paper. Mm-hmm. Oh, we went so many directions. Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter. To be dot TV, search for Lucha Underground. Yeah, those things. In these dark times, you need a hefe. Especially if you enjoyed the Firefly Funhouse and you have never seen Lucha Underground. The fuck are you doing with your life? I would say if you everything, like- everything that you liked about Lucha about the Firefly Funhouse. And the Boneyard match, mm-hmm. and even some of the Last Man Standing match, mm. everything that you liked about those matches, that's Lucha Underground, and it's like all of it. Mm-hmm. Like Lucha Underground had us wondering about a key for a damn season and a half. This is true. A fucking key. And Sorg, I was watching the first season again. I finally realized Dario Cueto was talking to Matanza the whole time. He was standing in front of a cage. Huh. I never put it together because you didn't see the cage. Yeah. You yeah. didn't see it. You just saw him standing in a darkened area looking, clearly talking to someone. He was talking to his brother. He was talking to his brother the whole time. And I'm like, right. Okay. And now it even makes me want to watch more of it. it uh, slightly uh, Matanza related here. Um, so somebody commented on because it, it, I was reminded of a f- several years ago. Uh, uh, oh, who is he? Uh, why is his name escape me? The guy that plays Matanza. Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb. Thank you. Jeff Cobb. Uh, Jeff, Cobb. Jeff Cobb in a match with David Starr from a couple years ago here in Pittsburgh. Uh, where where Cobb doesn't have shoes and just has black tights on because they lost his luggage. Oh yeah, he came out in flip flops. <laughs> well, look that up on Indie Wrestling US. Um, oh, he was not Tanza Riddle. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. I'm Sorgatron. Mayhem. Ow. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.